Cool. All right, guys. Um, so I'm Mark Pereira. I'm a mostly front-end software developer. I deal um, around front-end technologies and API technologies, and we have Radek Ostrowski. Um, we've teamed up to build the front and back end of Tensorum's architecture. Uh, if you haven't heard of Tensorum, uh, you can go over to Daniel and ask him for his Twitter handle and fill up your Twitter with some Tensorum noise. He's very good doing that. Um, <clears throat> but I'm here to tell you about this solution that we've derived based around uh, public addresses and how we are dealing with private keys to offer a more approachable layer to blockchain solutions today. So this is the main culprit. Um, how users currently interact is a lot around these public addresses. Um, and we've, we've worked really hard, you know, broken some arms to, to come up with uh, solutions around how we can, we can solve this problem and make these public addresses more approachable to people. Um, also, what is this gas thing? A little sneak peek into um, something that we're, we're focusing on focusing it on, and it's a unique solution that we've actually found while delving into this problem. So the problems with having this one address is usually there's one key that controls this public address. And that's a single point of failure. Um, most people keep all of their funds in this, in this one account. If you lose it, all of your assets are gone. Um, another thing is with this one key, that accesses your account, you can't use it on multiple devices securely. What you have to do is you have to take your key and then paste it into your computer, into your mobile device, maybe even into your, into your MetaMask or your Chrome extension. And this is, as some people would be aware of, very insecure because you're exposing your key and putting it into other places. Um, also, public addresses aren't easy to remember. And we have a really interesting solution for this. But let's focus in on the multi-signature wallets. So you, you could use a multi-signature wallet, which requires many different keys, but each of these accounts have to have Ethereum or some sort of native cryptocurrency in them to be able to interact with this multi-signature wallet. And to set them up, you, you have to have gas, and it's not very user-friendly at the moment if you've ever played with a multi-sig wallet. So here's our solution. We've designed a personal multi-sig wallet. So this wallet here is your public address, but you access this wallet with multiple keys. So you generate a key on your mobile device, maybe on a hardware wallet, maybe on um, your laptop. You set permissions for all of these keys to interact with your personal multi-sig wallet so that maybe you have your Private, your private key stored in a Chrome extension and you're not fully trusted in its environment, what you can do is you can say, okay, I want to send some uh, Ethereum or some sort of cryptocurrency to another person, but it requires you to sign two messages. It requires you to sign a message on the Chrome extension and then a message on your, maybe your mobile device or your, your laptop. So uh, um, just emphasizing that this personal wallet has its own, its own public address and all of these have private keys sitting on them which access this wallet. We've gone a step further and we said, okay, this wallet has a public address, but this is what we want it to look like. You don't go to a website and type in the IP address to, um, to access that website. You type in a URL, you type in, you know, tensor.org, ethereum.org. So we want it to be a lot, a lot like, you know, your email address or your Twitter handle. You just have to type in someone's name and you can verify that public address. So it's a, it's a lot more crucial. We also get into gasless transactions. So as, um, if you call it before, each account has to have, each account that you're using on a smart contract platform or any platform has to have some sort of gas um, associated with it to do any sort of transaction. We have now created a radical came up with this awesome solution around abstracting gas away from the user so that they can interact with our platforms without having to worry about gas. Um, just to add to that, all, all of the code is open source. You can have a look at it, you can contribute. 
Uh, it's inspired by a lot of interesting projects out there, which is what's amazing about this space, is everyone has everything out there. Um, we have joined a few um, alliances and communities out there to push standards around what we're doing. And we're collaborating with a few interesting projects like Uport, Iron Token, Gollum, Bitcoin, um, and, and many others to bring this to life. So we're really community driven um, project. So I'll have Brady come over and talk about the, the architecture. Um, so we're about to demo you a proof of concept. We've I, ironed out the architecture so that we can bring to you this concept that we built on a mobile device, but um, Radical will introduce you more to it. Hey everyone, uh, I don't want to take all the credits for this because it all came from community, so they've been, there are several projects at the moment trying to do similar things. So we are just looking at all of them, picking different solutions from different projects and trying to put it all into one solution that can, con that can uh, benefit the end user as much as possible. And we are focusing primarily on the user experience because this is what blockchain has been, has been lacking so far. <coughs> So here are several components of, of the demo that, that we'll show you. Um, so first component is selecting the mobile application that we have, but it can be any, any type of application, which will integrate our SDK. Uh, we're using ENS, which is uh, Ethereum name service, something like domain name system in, in the internet, like instead of typing in IP addresses of websites, you're typing in the names themselves, like google.com which gets resolved to the actual IP address. So ENS is the same thing, but for Ethereum. Um, the next component will be our SDK, and then I'll talk a bit about relayers that we have and about the personal smart contract, personal wallet smart contract. Um, there are more components that are currently there, and there will be even more components that we'll build in the near future, but I'll just skip them for the sake of this presentation. Right, so starting with the app. Um, Amark designed this nice mobile application. And uh, what it's doing, it's uh, when you download it and you launch it, it will generate uh, an address. Uh, it's your own, it's unique, nobody will have the same one. And this, this private and public key that's generated on this phone, it should never leave the phone. And it should be an empty account. So if, if you lose it, if you drop your phone to the toilet and you flush it down, well, you haven't lost your funds because this, this wallet was empty. Uh, what this wallet will give you is the access to some other thing, which is the personal and autistic wallet. It gives you access. And then there are several uh, ways that we think of giving access in different like granularity. So there will be this so-called master accounts, which kind of give you the most, the most rights. There will be some action accounts and some recovery accounts. And in this demo, we'll just show you like a master account. Um, yeah, recovery accounts is something that we'll uh, do down the line, and this will let you do social recovery using Web of Trust. Uh, coming to the EMS, uh, I've already briefly touched on this. Uh, we recently launched a product which is running on uh, Ethereum mainnet. It's called Tens ID. Basically, with a few clicks, you can register your own username, which will be pointing to your, your Ethereum address. Um, I think we have like over 100 people that already registered for their usernames. And down the line, those usernames will be pointing to your personal logistic wallets. So this is like kind of like our end target architecture. But for now, you can reserve the name of if you're choosing. Um, and gen generally speaking, getting an EMS domain is quite a complex process. Um, you have to participate in an auction. It takes five days. You have to bid some money. Um, what we are doing, we're, we're circumventing this. We kind of got a domain already. And then we are letting people use subdomains of our domain. And we automated the whole process. So you can just, I welcome you go. Uh, Go to the website, go to Product Hunt or Tensorum Tens ID, and you can like try it out for yourself and claim your own name with just a few clicks. Um, so in this example, this is a screenshot of Tens ID, and uh, just by typing in Sidef 
and having like an open wallet in the browser, we could, we could claim this ID. Uh, what else? Okay, the next component is the SDK. So we've been building a, a tool which should allow any developer out there to very easily integrate with our solution. So we're trying to abstract away all the complexities of dealing with uh, yeah, doing the gastrous transactions or interacting with the EMS. Basically, what you can do is just you just call some methods. So in this example, in the demo today, we'll be calling a method called transfer tokens no reward. So basically, the developer would just have to fill in some parameters, and then all the complexities of signing messages, sending to relayers, and no, 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 it's it's not visible to you, but the thing will work. Um, and as Mark already said, like we are open sourcing most of our code. I think everything will be open sourced eventually. Uh, so you can just you know free to go and visit and, and ask questions and, and contribute. Um, so then the next component is the Tensorum service nodes. So this is kind of like the most important part of the whole system. This will be decentralizing the way the transactions are executed. And um, what's very cool about it is that anybody could run it, and it won't be as difficult as setting up your blockchain node. It'll be very easy, it will just give you some package. You just have to just gen put some ether in there, which will serve for paying the transactions. And you have to stake some 10, 10 tokens uh, as a collateral, but then uh, you'll, be, you'll be getting fees from all the people that, that push transactions your way and you'll be getting some additional uh, rewards uh, in terms of tensor tokens. We are working on a, on a way to encourage anybody running those nodes to earn additional tokens. And, and last contract, so this is deployed on the blockchain. It has two main features. One is that it defines different roles. And so as I mentioned already, there is this like master action and recovery role. And those will get assigned to different uh, wallet addresses. So you have this mobile application, which will have an account. And this could be your action account. So you can be using it only, for, for example, for small spendings. Or you can have this action account in some game, in some D app somewhere. And then you can just give it a small allowance to work on your, to operate on your, on your funds. And then you will have those secure master accounts which have rights to move all of your funds. Um, and the main, the core component of, of this smart contract allowing gaseous transactions is this function called execute, which lets anybody out there execute messages on your behalf on your smart contract. Uh, passing any arbitrary parameters. Um, so this is quite cool. They, there are so many companies working on this right now and none of them got it right yet. So we are out there uh, working with them, trying to uh, push it, make it a standard, and so it can benefit everybody in the space. Um, just maybe a quick slide on to recap what the gas transaction is. Uh, and it is doing lots of work and it's working very hard to try to make things very simple. So if you are a new user and you come to this space and you just like people told you, your friends told you, oh, there's this blockchain thing, go and start using this. You don't want to be thinking about gas, about wallets, about stuff. What you want is basically just use an app, download the program, choose a username, uh, and then you just say, yeah, I want to transfer some tokens from here to there. You don't want to be typing those addresses, you just want to put like a usernames. I want to transfer something from Mark to Radek. And then the, the rest will happen behind the scenes. So there will be those messages which are exchanged, there will be the service nodes which are executing the transactions, and then the actual action will happen on chain and the tokens will, will swap the accounts or the ether will be sent or whatever else, but we try to take it away. And uh, gasless transactions let us do most of these things. Um, right, I think, anything I missed before the demo? Yeah, so just, just to clarify what, what we've done previously uh, to this demo is we've set up a personal wallet with the key of 
that is held on a mobile device, we've, we've given access to that key already. We haven't set up the access on the mobile device yet, and that's what we'll be showing you in the demo. So what I'm doing here is copying the address and showing you that this address actually has no ether, nothing to do with, uh, no tokens. So this, this address is something that you can lose and you're not going to lose any of your assets. All you're going to lose is access to your personal wallet. Yeah, so here, okay. that was a, oops. Just put it in here. And here is the, the, simple, the sample app that we are using. And it, when the app was downloaded, it generated the key on it. So we just checked if the, the key is brand empty. It's brand new, it has nothing in it. And, and the next thing is we will check if this key has rights to access any of the personal wallets. It did restart it. Yeah, OK, so let's wait a second. Um, so yeah, we see it's empty. And now we'll, we'll, the next thing we'll try to do is kind of we'll, we want to log in. So uh, remember we told you about this ENS. So you have your personal login. And so now we're trying to log in to personal wallet of Radek. There is this red X button. Basically, what it means like you are not authorized. This this key on this phone is not authorized to use the account. And we can confirm it and go into the blockchain and uh, uh, checking directly. Uh, we should see that this account is not a master account, so it should not be authorized. I'm turning back by and see if it's happening. And see it's, it's false, it's not authorized. But nonetheless, it can show you, it can show you all the balance, what, what's in your, in, in your wallet. And I'm trying to look in a smart, and that, that's correct, it has access. So it, it lets you to, to be set, you, you see the green tick. You see, Mark's account has one ether and 921 tens tokens. Um, and now, what, what we will try to do is send some tokens to. Okay, here again, you see like a view of your wallet. So uh, there are some Tensor tokens, and some ether, some other tokens that you're faking for now. Um, and then. Uh, now instead of typing the address, we just type in the username, which gets goes to ENS and resolves the actual address. So it displays it there, so you can confirm this is really true. But saves you a lot of typing. And we are saying, okay, we want to transfer from Mark's account to Radix account 11 Tensor tokens. And uh, what will happen behind the scenes is the message gets signed. It it gets sent to the relayer, and the relayer pushes it on the chain. And we can see here. The transaction is pending. Uh, this is this uh, execute message which I talked about. So basically, this is the, the core of the smart contract. It lets anybody relay any message. Uh, in a few moments, when the transaction gets confirmed, we can see what it actually was. And if you notice uh, the from parameter, the from from account, this is the relayer. So it could be, it could come from anybody. We haven't seen this address before, and anybody who is willing to relay a transaction can, can just go forward and, and, and participate in the network. Um, and here we're actually confirming that the tokens have moved from, from Mark's account to my account, and, uh, and the transaction was successful. So we moved. 11 Tensor and Robson tokens. Alright, so I know that was a lot of jumping back and forth, but just to conclude everything and all the abstract thoughts that you may have, have been like detached from, I'm um, trying to solidify that in your head now. So, what we did is we set up a, a public um, uh, personal multisig wallet and give access to your mobile phone. We check the access to make sure that this mobile phone um, had access to the personal multisig wallet. Then we signed a transaction and that transaction was sent to a service node. So that's an, a regular internet transaction. You don't have to 
facilitate the transaction with gas because the service node is actually going to add gas to this transaction and put it onto the Ethereum blockchain for you. And then um, the transaction will be picked up by a node on the Ethereum network and the transaction will be complete. So I'll send money from my wallet to Radix wallet. So we didn't pay any gas, we just said we want we, we want to send money from my account to Radix one, and then a service node, which is a decentralized layer on top of the Ethereum blockchain, facilitated this transaction for us. Um, so we've put a lot of hard work and effort into this, um, and it's finally becoming reality, and it's pretty much we're hitting the ground running now and we're aiming to push out a lot of products by the end of the year. So definitely keep an eye on, on us, give us your concerns, we'd love to have a chat with you after. I'd, love, I'd like to give out my thanks to everyone who's been working with Tensor and making my life so much easier. Um, this startup is really amazing, we have really like uniquely skilled people that really complement each other. Um, it'd be awesome if you go, out, go to this URL um, on Product Hunt and um, upvote it just to make some noise, represent Sydney. Uh, 120 people have done it already. Um, how much people have signed up for a TENS ID already? 124. 124 people signed up for a TENS ID. Don't miss out on your own. This is, <laughs> this is that username that you wish you got early on and now you have to settle for one with like a bunch of numbers after. And we launched it like two days ago or three days ago? Yeah. Three, yeah, three days ago. Um, that's on our website at tensorum.org slash tens underscore ID. Um, also, email Mars Bid, that guy sitting down right there with the incredible bid. And um, hit him up on email so you can have further chats if you want to be a you know, contrib contributor and supporter. Um, does anyone else, does anyone here want to see a live demo? Because I, I, I personally like the demo gods, people don't. But um, I just want to show you how like, simple it really is to send a gasless transaction. So we saw a lot of jumping around that mobile um, app before. So what I'm going to do is show you. I want to access my personal multi-sig wallet. This is my account. I want to set it to Radic. Send, it, send it to Spam. Or, or Spam was another guy in our network. We don't like him too much. But we'll, we'll send it to Spam. So spam is a regular account. It's not the personal wallet. Yeah. So this is what we envision it to be. So you want to send, um, uh, let's give him 10 Tensorum tokens. Um, so I have to select, send it. So that waits for the transaction to be submitted. This is the part that's the, that gets you nervous. Like, is it actually going to be mine? So waiting for a message. So the service node has taken our message, paid for the gas, put it onto Ethereum blockchain. And now we're waiting patiently. <laughs> it's not my fault, it's Ethereum's fault. Huh? <laughs> Put the on the line. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody called you on the theory of the Let's go in. There we go. Hey. Hey. Um, so transaction has been submitted. And just for um, just for viewing sakes, we, we go on to Robston Ether Scan to see that this transaction is actually being submitted and is pending. Um, thanks for taking time out tonight and uh, watching our demo, guys. I really appreciate it. Questions. So where does the gas come from? Basically? Okay, cool. So one second. So it's, it's the the relayers. So if if you would like to become a relayer, I'm thinking, right? you have to yeah. put your gas. You have to top up your like account, long, and you'll be paying for the gas. But then, as part of some offering the service, you can say, "I will only relay the transaction if you repay me the gas, for example, in tokens or in Ethereum itself." And then the, the, the Ethereum or the tokens, they can come from your personal wallet. So, but the, the fee is an optional thing because maybe you have some DIA offering some service, and then a particular relayer might be sponsoring. Relayer will be sponsoring transactions. But you, if you want to make business, you would you put some Ethereum forward, but then for every transaction you charge some fees. And we are working on a solution that even if we charge you fees and tokens, automatically they will get converted to Ether anyway. 
because at the end you're paying Ether, you want Ether back, you want to like, see your earnings in Ether. So we're looking at the Kyber swap. Kyber lets you do like a token to Ether exchange online on a smart contract. We're looking at utilizing those. So at, at the end, you will just see Ether like, growing on your account. And, uh, and, yeah, and users can send tokens without thinking about Ether. So I guess this is the benefit for the users. And for you as a relayer, you'll be earning earning something for doing your work and contributing to the network. So like this transaction so, we just, so this was sponsored transaction. So basically the, the relayer is a sponsored relayer. It paid for the gas and didn't take anything back. No, but we, we, can, we can send it so it would take some tokens as a, as a, as a fee or it would take some ether from the personal wallet as a fee. Yeah, but like this, this relayer was our relayer that did the thing, was our transaction service yeah. node. Yeah. But it could be like a whole bunch of different relayers of different independent people and they might have different requirements. So then as a user, like, we'll try to abstract it away in an SDK. Uh, so the SDK maybe will pick always the cheapest relayer or the one most reliable. So we're still working on algorithms and this is quite quite complex subject. Uh, but for now, we're just like randomly picking a relayer which is available out there and they will propagate the transaction. So you're subsidizing now Yeah, yeah. Then it's actually it will be actually a business for people to run those. Any other questions? Are you gonna I guess it uh you you are yeah, not first sorry. Okay, so uh, I'm not familiar with the AWS at all, but it okay. sounds decentralized DNS for uh It's like this the centralized DNS on the book, yeah. So it's a, it's a smart contract that just Pretty much does the same thing as domain name services. So everything is inside of a smart contract hosted on Ethereum, which makes it decentralized. Yeah. So you're accepting all sorts of Ethereum tokens? Um, as rewards? Uh, uh, yes. So the, the rewards they will be up to the up to the nodes running them. So if you run your own node, you can say I only accept some fee and some tokens. But then if this user that tries to use your service, they don't have this token, they cannot pay you the fee. Uh, so but then it, yeah, it, it depends on, on what you want as a, as, a, as a service provider. But from the point of view of the smart contract, at the moment, it's you can accept fees in Ether or any ERC20. Yeah, Sorry, those, those tokens that have low volume, how do you see that? So, if, if we integrate the thing I mentioned with the Kyber swap, where you take a token and you convert it to Ethereum, the like Kyber doesn't support every ERC20. They have like the one with bigger, big, bigger volumes. If you personally decide to accept something which is a lower volume, it's up to you. It's your call. Maybe you're collecting. Yeah. So there is a little bit more. But it's not, it's not the same as the black paper transaction. Uh, so basically, the transact, so like the, the overhead is a little bit and will be the same. Yeah, it's exactly yeah. yeah. Basically, it's just, it takes a payload, sign payload from you, it unpacks it, it packs it in a new Ether transaction, and pushes it to the net. But then, if you're doing lots of computation underneath, it will still. Uh, so, can you show the personal wallet again? So, the execute method, it has a data parameter. So, whatever the data of your transaction is, it will go in there. So, if it's a token transfer, it will be, if it's an ether transfer, it will be zero. Run. So, this key name is going to be tradable? The yeah, NS name? Yes. yes, they will be tradable. So. No, maybe we can clog up the network like. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Will there be a signature bundle? Sorry? Will there be an ERC signature bundle? For the ENS names? Yeah. No, we, there will be no, there, no. There's no need for it really. Oh, it's just a, just a field.
Cool. Thank you so much, guys. Um, it was awesome having you. Thanks for having us. Cool.